guys. So one of the recipes that I wanted to share with you is my slow cooker teriyaki chicken. And one of the things that I wanted to point out is that in my, let me get you guys set up here. In my mind, there are two different methods to freezer cooking. The, the first method is to basically um, have a, a uh, freezer cooking day where you just cook and you cook and you cook and you cook it for four hours or however long it takes you. Um, which is fine, I do that sometimes, but my most common method of freezer cooking is just to take whatever I'm making for dinner one night and double the recipe. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is, how fast it is, it is, it's just, everyone in my opinion should do this. It saves so much time and it will save you money. So, let me show you what I'm gonna be using. First, I'm gonna be using um, just some frozen chicken breasts and I didn't, go crazy and spend a whole bunch of money on um, ingredients because I want every, I want you guys to know that this does not have to be expensive. It's very affordable to do this. So this bag of chicken at my Walmart I think is like $6.50. It's less than $7. So this is actually going to make two meals for my family. I have seven people that I'm feeding. So if you have less than that, you can probably get away with doing even less chicken. And then the next ingredient is going to be this teriyaki sauce by Kikoman. Um, this is a little bit more expensive than just regular traditional teriyaki, but I really liked this one. It actually, um, I don't know, you can see the sesame seeds in it. It just, it looked, it looks really good. <laughs> so this is the one that I'm going to be using, but you can of course use regular teriyaki. I'm also going to be using a can of pineapple chunks that I'm just going to divide between the two recipes. I'm going to be using some crushed ginger. And I'm gonna be using some crushed garlic and that is it you guys I'm going to put this in my slow cooker and it's gonna cook um, for probably about the next four to five hours and it's gonna be ready to go um, about 45 minutes or so before it's gonna be ready I will put some rice in my slow cooker and it's like the world's easiest dinner and it's a huge hit my family loves it so let me show you real fast oh the other thing is a freezer bag that I go ahead and label um, I've got chicken teriyaki on here and I because there's a chance that I may not be the one who is um, starting this meal, you know, again, when we pull it out of the freezer, I go ahead and put the instructions on here, cook on low six to eight hours. Um, I'm going to be cooking my, mine on high just because I don't have six to eight hours. So um, if I did have six to eight hours, I'd cook it on low. That's a, that's rambly. Okay. So let me just show you guys what I got going on here real quick. I've got my croak, my, my croak my crock pot my slow cooker here that y'all won't really be able to see but i am going to take the chicken put it down in here it is frozen so it makes it even easier actually that this one i'm gonna throw in this bag see how they're all stuck together i'm gonna throw that in the bag and then I have three breasts in here that are, one is really big and two of them are smaller. All right, chicken is in, bag is empty. Chicken is in here. I'm now going to pour half of this. Oh, it's, oh. It smells like a Chinese food restaurant. I'm not even kidding. It smells so authentic. I'm gonna pour half of this over my chicken that's in my crock pot right now. And the other half of it is gonna go in the bag for the freezer. Done. And with this, uh, the um, pineapple chunks, I'm actually gonna pour in the juice and everything. I'm not going to, um, I'm not gonna drain this. So we've got some juice and some pineapple going in here. Pour a little bit of juice into here so that I don't lose it all. Half of it in this bag, half of it in my crock pot. That's done. Alright, because we like garlic, I'm going to actually use um, two cloves. These are equivalent to one clove of garlic. I'm going to use two in each one because we do like garlic in our family and it's healthy. It's good for you, so why not? Alright, garlic. And then I'm going to put in one ginger, one, it's not a clove of ginger, but I guess it's the equivalent of a clove of ginger. And that is it. This one, we're going to seal it all up. 
It doesn't need anything else. It looks disgusting in the bag, but I promise you it will be delicious. And because this is all like really frozen together, probably what I'll do the next time we have this, which will not be, I don't know, a month from now maybe, um, I'll take it out of my freezer and let it thaw overnight before I'm going to um, put it in my slow cooker. But I'll let you guys come over here and see what's in my slow cooker. See if I can pick you up and not drop you. See, there it is. And now this is going to cook, sorry guys. This is going to cook on high. It is almost two o'clock right now. This is gonna cook for four to five hours. And I'm done. Dinner is done. And that is, well, almost done. I still have to make rice. But let's be honest. That, I do that in a rice cooker. And you just throw, the, throw in the rice. When I make rice, I make mine usually with um, chicken stock instead of water. Because that just gives it a little bit more depth of flavor. Um, another tip that I learned from Rachel Ray. And that's it. Like, super easy. Now I have dinner for tonight in the crock pot. I don't even have to think about it anymore. I've got another dinner that I can throw in my freezer and it took me like five minutes, maybe less than that. So that is um, one recipe I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you will give it a try. If you like this type of meal, I guarantee you, you will love this one. You guys enjoy. Hey guys, tonight for dinner, I am making one of my family's favorite meals and that is um, chicken tater tot casserole. And um, it is not a healthy meal by any stretch of the imagination, but it definitely falls into the, the category of comfort food. So I'm gonna make my family's dinner for tonight and I'm also going to be making an extra casserole to throw into my freezer. And I'm just gonna show you guys how, the, how I do this. It's really, really simple. Um, I saw a recipe online um, months ago and I made it the way that I saw it and then I've made it a couple different ways since then. And I've kind of just tweaked the recipe. So, you know, based on what my family really likes. So I'm gonna give you the very basic recipe and then you just do whatever you think is gonna work for your family, if this is something that you think that your family would enjoy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this um, and I will show you guys how to put this together. Okay guys, so I wanted to, um, while things are heating up, I wanted to go ahead and tell you what exactly is in this casserole. But um, originally what I started making for my family was the um, tater tot casserole that has ground beef in it. Um, and then I just decided one day to try it with chicken. And so I looked up a recipe, like I mentioned, and we tried it and we actually preferred the chicken to the ground beef. And so normally I just do it with chicken now. But you absolutely can make this with ground beef or ground turkey or whatever your family likes. Um, the very basic recipe that I use is right now um, in the green pot over there on the stove, oh, this way, I have chicken breasts that are coming to a boil. Sometimes I cook chicken breasts in the crock pot and then just shred it. Sometimes I boil them, um, you know, whatever works for you. Today I'm boiling them because it's, it's faster. Um, and then I also use cream of mushroom and cream of chicken soup. This time will be the first time that I'm using both of those homemade. I made my cream of chicken soup um, tonight and I will leave that recipe in the description box below for you guys. It was super, super easy. Um, basically, I'll just tell you it's a full stick of butter, which is half a cup of butter. You melt that, you put in half a cup of flour, and you whisk it together until it becomes like a thick paste. I poured in four cups of milk, but I kind of poured it in like two cups, and then I let that warm up and get a little bit thick, and then I poured in the other two cups. And then I used, I started off with three chicken bouillon cubes, and then I tasted it, and it wasn't quite as um, intense of a chicken flavor as I was looking for, so I added one more. So I, have a, I had a total of four of the chicken bouillon cubes. Um, and if you use, let's see, better than bouillon chicken base, which I also have in my refrigerator, but I just wanted to get rid of this, honestly. It has the, measure, the, can, um, the measurements on it so that you can see how many like teaspoons of that you would need to use for one cube of this. And that's it. I added a little bit of pepper. I did not add any salt because you guys, have, if you've ever used this, you know that it has a lot of salt in it. 
Um, that's all. And I just cooked it until it was thick. And I mean, I my husband tried it, Ryan tried it, and everyone said it was good. So he said it's amazing. So that I'm using um, one serving. I've got chicken trying to boil it. Okay, sorry guys. I didn't want to have a huge mess on my stove. So, um, yes, I've got cream of chicken, cream of mushroom soup, both in the little, you can't see it, but it's in a, a slightly smaller pan over there. And the other thing that I've added this time is um, when I used to make this recipe with beef, I would always add um, onion soup mix to it and it gave it a really like very, very intense savory flavor. It was delicious. We loved it that way. So I decided to give it a try with the chicken as well. Um, I already tasted the cream sauce that everything's gonna be cooked in and it is amazing. It is so good. So cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, onion soup mix, which if I can find a recipe to make that homemade, I might consider it. We'll see. Um, you've got your chicken and then your tater tots and then cheese. This enormous bowl of cheese is not all for our dinner tonight, but I bought the really big block. I think it's like a two pound block from Costco. And in order to save myself the time and the trouble of having to grate it multiple times during the week when I need it for recipes, I just grate it all at one time and then I'll stick it in um, a Ziploc bag and stick it in the refrigerator. Um, so then I'll top it with some cheddar cheese, stick it in the oven, and it really is that simple. So I'm gonna finish cooking all of the components to this meal and then right before I get ready to put it together, I will let you guys see what it looks like and let you watch me do that. I have a child playing in here. Okay guys, so I have my chicken cooked and whenever I need to shred a large amount of chicken, I always do it in my KitchenAid mixer just because it saves on time quite a bit. And um, I was gonna let you know if you've never heard that tip, that it will save you time. Um, Sometimes, if you're not paying attention, it will shred it too, too small. It'll like turn it into, it's not even meat anymore. So you kind of have to be careful and watch it when you're shredding the chicken. But if you just put your paddle attachment on, it does a really good job. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and add my soup mixture that is completely combined and ready to go and I'm gonna put it right in here with this and I'm gonna mix it all together and then I will be ready to assemble my casseroles but let me show you what this looks like real quick this is basically um, what would be the equivalent of one can of cream of chicken one can of can of cream of mushroom and then um, the onions to mix so I'm gonna put these together and then we will start assembling the casseroles okay guys so we are ready to go ahead and assemble these casseroles I just have two of these um, disposable that's the word um, pans that I'm gonna use simply because I have them and here's our chicken mixture I'm gonna just kind of distribute it evenly between the two of them on the bottom of this pan I don't generally have a problem with anything sticking in these pans, but if I were going to be using one of my regular glass bake, you know, bakeware dishes, then I would probably I would definitely spray the bottom of it just so that nothing, you know, sticks. I'm going to spread the chicken out in here in both of them. Big old piece of chicken still in that one. That's the only thing about doing the chicken in the in the KitchenAid, you know, the stand mixer that I found is that because you don't want to completely liquefy your chicken, sometimes you get some bigger pieces, so you just have to kind of watch for it. And then I'm just going to use tater tots, and I'm going to use one bag of tater tots for two casseroles. I'm trying to save a little bit of money. Let's make that a little more even. Just kind of spread them out. The pictures that I have seen of this casserole online, the tater tots are like all perfectly lined up. Yeah, I don't have time for that. And my family doesn't really care how pretty it is when it comes out of the oven. Is that right, honey? It's all good once it's in stuff. Yep. Tastes the same whether it's pretty or not. So, we've got tater tots, we've got chicken. Now let me grab some cheese. Move this. I've got a soup full of dishes building up over here. All right, guys. I'm gonna put the cheese on the top of here, and it really, it really, seriously is that simple. 
and you would be shocked at how much my family loves this meal. Now I will say, let me give you guys one tip that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, you definitely do not want your chicken mixture to be dry when you put it in the oven because it's going to dry out even further. So you want it to be a little bit on the wet side. You want it to be almost a little bit what my mom would call soupy in the, in the consistency. Um, because it's going to dry out some when you put it in the oven. And if it's, you know, really thick and not very liquidy when you first put it in, you're going to end up with a really dry casserole. And I've made, I've made it like that before. And while no one complains, it's, you know, it's just not as good. So we've got cheese. I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. And then I'm going to put it in the oven. It is 552. Here we go. We've got our chicken tater tot casserole. Like I said, not healthy, not at all, <laughs> um, but it is comfort food and my family likes it. Wait, I gotta get a cookie sheet. Um, I will say that making the soups homemade, while it is still not a healthy meal by any stretch of the imagination, makes me feel a little bit better about giving it to my family because at least it's not processed, you know, preservative filled stuff in a can that I used in order to make it. You know, it's homemade, it's milk, and it, you know, almost an eggs, no eggs. It's milk and butter and flour, and it's homemade. So, that is in the oven. I've got it set at about 375, and it will cook for, I'm probably gonna let it cook for about 25 to 30 minutes, and then I'll check on it, and it'll probably be done. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get this other one sitting over here to the side so it can cool. I'm gonna clean up my mess a little bit. And I'll show you guys what it looks like when it comes out.